good afternoon everybody uh, till now we have covered the generation of v in and dc bat out and we are taking two board as a reference one is lenovo y570 and another is dv2000 so we have discussed the generation of v in and dc bat out and the working of charger ic in the previous class and we have understood how those things work and once we understand the entire steps we'll be using this to test things practically so we'll be going one step further in our power rail and today in this class I'm going to discuss the generation of 3.35 volt from 3.35 volt regulator IC and I would be going one step inside it that is how does a PWM controller works and what are the important pins in a PWM controller and I'll also discuss what exactly is a PWM controller why can't we use a linear regulator to generate these voltages and if we understand the exact working of PWM regulator we can clear uh, doubts in all the sections like generation of 3.35 volt, generation of CPU core voltages, generation of DIN voltages these all are very similar if, if we understand one regulator properly then we can understand each of the regulators properly okay so let's go to the class today's class and the today's class we are going to cover the 3.35 volt regulators okay so we've already covered these things I'll just going move smoothly to the slides we have already covered these things in uh, in the previous class V in okay generation of V in we have already discussed now this is today's class we are going to discuss the 3.3 5 volt regulator IC in our in our today's class in our today's class uh, we are taking reference of Lenovo Y570 and the um, DV2000 so in Lenovo Y570 the 3.3 5 volt regulator IC is RT8206M that is the IC number the 3.3 5 volt regulator IC is RT8206M okay we can check in a schematic we can see in this schematic okay RT8206 right RT8206 we'll search it and this is the 3.3 5 volt regulator IC okay so today's class we're going to understand each of them in great details everything has to be crystal clear and every pin has significance in electronics in any elect in electronics if you want to understand the function of any IC we have to understand the working of most of the pins most of the important pins so my aim in the entire course is to discuss all the important pins which are important for the working right not only see like this if you see these pins these pins you can understand its working but can you understand the working of TOM can you understand the working of PVCCs there is a VCC okay and there is another pin PVCC PVCC do we understand the working of these pins so if we understand the working of each pins then we can understand the exact working okay so let's move to the class and we'll move to the slides smoothly these things we already covered up in the previous class so till previous class we have discussed the generation of V in in Lenovo Y570 and DC bat out in DV2000 so let's refer to Lenovo Y570 V in is generated okay and V in goes to the pin number 6 of RTA206 this is the first step you can check V in V in and I will also look at the data set but here in the starting I'll just cross over the entire steps I'll cross over the entire steps 
and then we will discuss each of the steps okay so the first step is v in is coming at pin number six and another thing has to be required that is this v in by a resistance divider is going to enable ldo this is the second step you can check v in is going over here it's enabling the ic it's giving the supply voltages to the ic and the v in with a resistance divider that is 4 volt the here this resistance divider divides the voltages and a 4 volt is fitted to enable ldo that will enable the internal linear regulator and ldo means low drop out voltages there are two kinds of regulators we'll understand we'll discuss in the today's class also that two kinds of regulators one is linear regulators another is switch more power supply that is pwm regulators right so linear regulator the linear regulator you don't have to be concerned with mosfets turning on of mosfets right whereas if you have a switch mode um, regulator you have to be concerned with switchage because switch on switch off switch on switch off whereas in linear regulators it directly generates a voltages so v in has come to the point pin number six and v in through a resistance divider is going to the enable ldo so the ldo is enabled so this ldo if it's enabled it will generate a volt voltage of 5 volt at this pin that is ldo is your output pin you'll get an output of 5 volt over here you can see and this 5 volt is labeled over here in this schematic as 5v underscore al al means always on we always on there's a confusion what exactly is always on in always on there's a no interference no interference of any mechanical interference and we will discuss this in acpi what exactly is always on what exactly is sus on right we'll discuss all these things but right now this ldo the ldo generated by rt8206m which is a 3.3 5 volt regulator ic generates that is labeled as 5v underscore l now this work of ldo the question arises why do we need ldo well in this circuit in this circuit this ldo has an important role right and we can see in the next next uh, slide what is the role of 5v underscore al you see over here uh, you see over here the v in the this is the rt8206 mgqw and a similar kind of ic is rt8206 l and we will differentiate what is the difference between these two type chips okay this there are there are two external mosfets we call it synchronous switches synchronous switches we call it as synchronous switches this is the terminology of electronics synchronous right so this these these mosfets are also called as synchronous switches and v in is connected to the top of this n channel mosfets so you see arrow inside n channel in n channel current flows from drain to source right drain to source I'm always emphasizing on this part because to understanding to understand this schematic diagram you have to be very thorough with the basic and the basic is this MOSFET transistors capacitors inductors registers and if we understand the basics we can understand any schematic diagram all right so V in is fitted to the n channel MOSFET and in the n channel mosfet we have uh, this is inside so this is n channel mosfet current will flow from drain to source when gate is enabled gate is enabled means n channel mosfet vgs has to be positive right vgs has to be positive so the 5v underscore al generated at pin number 7 is feeded to 
pin number three VCC VCC right and what is the use of VCC and this 5A underscore AL is also gets feeded to the PVCC pin PVCC pin so this 5 volt uh, underscore L is very important because get feeded to VCC VCC controls uh, VCC supplies power to the internal logic of this regulator IC whereas this PVCC supplies to the driver circuit which generates signal to the low gate MOSFET right this L gate 2 L gate 2 and L gate 1 it generated by a get drive circuit inside this RT8206 and the power to that get drive circuit is feeded by PVCC. So if there's no voltages at PVCC, this won't work because this won't work because this L get to won't come because it comes only when PVCC is powered. So this LDO that means if your LDO is coming it must come it must go inside PVCC and PVCC these are connected okay so these are very important VCC is for the internal logic of this regulator IC where the PVCC supplies power to the gate drive circuit which generates L gate 2 you know you see L gate 2 is getting fed to the gate of the lower side MOSFET so it generates power to the gate drive circuit which generates gate signal right L gate to gate signal and please I'm just going uh, very uh, smoothly over here but I'll go into details when we look at the data sheet of this circuits okay I'm just going to the steps what step is there how 3.35 volt is generated we are going to the exact steps okay so this 5 volt now this 5 volt underscore L is very important because this is also going to the enable pin and unless it goes to the enable pin it won't generate this plus 3V CPU and it won't generate plus 5V CPU will also differentiate between the 3.35 volt regulator IC used in Lenovo Y570 and the uh, TPS5120 that is the regulator IC used in DV2000 what are the differences and why are those differences okay always once you ask questions why are those differences so here this LDO the LDO generated by 5V underscore AL and when LDO is generated, when it gets enable LDO and enable LDO is generated by the resistance divider. You see in the previous slide, this previous slide, enable LDO. When enable LDO is generated, when this supply, this V in through resistance divider goes to the enable LDO. When it gets enable LDO, it outputs LDO that is labeled as 5 underscore AL. And this 5 underscore L, L is very important because it generates because it generates VCC, PVCC and the 3.35 volt enable, enable signal. Okay. When it gets enable signal, then the uh, regulator, uh, the uh, RT8206M, the regulator, it will generate signal U gate and L gate and this as we have already discussed in the basic electronics this MOSFETs basically are type of switches and once this closes this opens this closes this opens and it switches to generate a voltage a lower voltages and this is a regulator which generates lower voltages is called buck regulators and this is a buck regulators it, gen it is generating a lesser voltages from V in and V in is approximately 19 volt and we are trying to generate a 3.3 and 5 volt from 19 volt through switching of this MOSFET and switching of these MOSFETs is controlled by the gate and this signal U gate 2 and L gate 2 this controls the switching on and switching off of this MOSFETs and 
when they when they will generate this signal when it will get enable signal and the enable signal in RT8206M comes from LDO and LDO will get generated when V in through resistance divider goes to the enable LDO pin. Okay, till now we are clear. The steps should be very clear because if if the steps should be clear then we can press in a step by step, right? If we miss any step then if you then will overlook it will overlook it and once you have a tendency to overlook anything it's become very hard to repair we must not overlook anything maybe it may be complex but if you break it in smaller parts we can understand it very smoothly okay so what we have studied till now the vn is go going to the ic V in through a resistance divider is going to the enable LDO pin. It generates LDO which is leveled as 5V underscore L. That 5V underscore L powers VCC and PVCC. VCC is for supplying the internal logic of 3.3 5 volt regulator IC where the PVCC is supplied to the gate drive circuit, internal gate drive circuit which will generate this uh, drive uh, gate drive for the lower MOSFET. Okay? And this 5V underscore L is also generating the enable signal. So we must check the enable signal. If you are not getting this enable signal, maybe this uh, 5V underscore L is not connected or uh, maybe this resistance may be soft or maybe this resistance may be open. This resistance may be open, okay. So we have to check everything. It gets enable voltages, then this uh, the regulator IC will generate DH DL drive high drive low okay and drive high means turn this switch on drive low means turn this switch on so we have off on off on okay and it will switch to generate 3 b CPU will go into the greater detail how does a PWM regulators work but right now let's check the steps Similarly, over here, the V in is going to the top, top MOSFET, okay. This is again a, a N-channel MOSFET. The arrow is inside, current flows from drain to source, only when VGS is positive, okay. So here, uh, the 5V underscore L is, going, is uh, there at the enable pin and 3.3 enable, that, that is going to the enable 1. So in level 1, so it will generate the signal uh, U get 1, U get 1 you see and the L get 1, okay, L get 1. So again this will turn off and turn on to generate plus 5V CPU. So this is the step of generating, but there are certain pins like phase 1, ILIM1, FB1, BYP, what are the meanings of this pin? Why those pins are? Okay, so we'll understand these pins also, why this is out one and why any regulator have a structure like this. We'll cover this in this class. Okay, so till now we are clear with the steps. Let's again see the steps over here. V in is coming, uh, V in is coming, okay, V in is coming over here at the pin number 6, then this V in is divided through resistance divided going to the enable LDO, it gets enable LDO, LDO generator marked by 5V underscore L, it goes to the VCC and PVCC and also goes to the enable pin and then this regulator will generate drive high, drive low signal to turn on, turn off this MOSFET to generate a lesser kind of lesser voltage from a high voltage. This is an example of buck regulators. Now we'll understand the all the pin details. We'll go into the data sheet and before going to the data sheet, let's consider a case of universal regulator. How does a regulator operate and that too a pulse with modulation regulator. Okay. Okay, so we have covered the working of 3.3 5 volt regulator IC till now and we have seen how does it work in Lenovo Y570. 
but we must know the working of each of the pins of this 3.35 volt regulator IC as it is one of the most important power regulator present on the notebook motherboard. But to understand the working of each of the points of these regulators, we have to understand how does a DC regulator works and what are the type of DC regulator. Basically, uh, this my this class would be a little theoretical, but it would quench the thrust of some of the electronic engineer who are doing this course of laptop repair to understand electronics in a better way. And to them who are just uh, have joined this course for repairing laptop motherboards, I'd also say to listen to this my class. And this is I have tried to simplify this class. Uh, as much as I can but, but this uh, the if you want to study entire things about DC regulator you must have a degree of uh, I think a graduate degree in electronics to understand certain things uh, and I have skipped those things purposefully because those are not required when we are trying to diagnose any chip about the, and we are going to know the working of that chip we don't require those mathematics so I have skip those mathematics and if somebody is really interested to have knowledge about those things also then he can personally message me and I can discuss those things with him so let's go about to discuss the DC regulators why do we need DC regulators the question is why actually we need DC regulators we need DC regulators because if we talk of a notebook motherboard we we can see at every point there is certain fixed voltages present and all those voltages are coming from a adapter in V in that we have already discussed those all voltages will come out from that V in so there must be some mechanism to convert a high voltage into a less voltage and on a notebook motherboard the source is adapter and battery and the sink is processor processor requires power to execute instructions and similarly the south breeze and IO controller they also require power to execute instructions to execute the work so we need DC regulators to generate different kind of voltages from a common V in or DC bat out now the question is there are two kinds of DC regulator we have seen uh, while discussing the uh, the 3.35 volt regulator in the Lenovo Y570 that there is an LDO LDO is low drop out and that is a linear regulator and we have seen the generation of 3 and 5 volt through switching on switching off of MOSFETs and that is we call it pulse with modulation regulator so why those two types of regulator why one linear regulator and why one pulse with modulator regulators and what is the difference between them in linear regulators we have we generate lesser voltages through resistive element right resistive element like we have a 12 volt and if we put a resistor across it there will be some drop of there will be some energy consumed across that resistor that will help drop the voltages that is one way that is very simple way that is we call it low drop out regulators but another is the PM PWM that is pulse with modulation we can generate a lesser voltages from a higher voltage or we can generate a higher voltage from a lesser voltage if we control the turn on and turn off of switch and let's see the next slide so the power switch the switch as we discussed in the Lenovo Y570 the switch was upper side MOSFET and the lower side MOSFET those are switch so the switch is critical to pulse with modulation regulators and by controlling the turning on and turning off, off of this switch we can generate different kinds of voltages from a common voltage and so what are the key elements in a PWM regulators one is two switch one inductor one capacitor and one feedback that is present in every PWM regulators what is the main function of inductor 
what does the inductor do that differentiate between a, a linear regulator and a pulse width modulation regulator in a pulse width modulation re regulator inductor basically limit the slew rate the f the rate of increasing current or rate of decreasing current that is slew rate so the inductor basically inductor is such an electronic is such an electronic component that it has inertia it has an inertia inside it it doesn't allow the current to go down instantaneously similarly it doesn't allow the current to rise up instantaneously it has a inertia right it has an inertia so this inductor is the key difference that differentiates between a PWM and a linear regulator the inductor limit the slew rate and in a linear regulator we have a much higher energy loss because there is a resistive element there is a resistive element across a linear regulator and in a resistive element we have loss of power power is directly proportional to i square r i square r so the r is resistance and if there is a voltage drop then the power loss will be too much whereas in inductor the power the power loss is less the power loss is less and we'll uh, discuss how this is less because an inductor stores energy right it stores energy so the power loss is less so to differentiate between a linear regulator and a PWM regulator what are the basic uh, differences the basic difference is in a linear regulator we generate a less voltage through a resistive element we try to drop the voltage across a resistor whereas in a PWM regulator we try to generate a lesser voltages I'm talking about buck regulator buck regulators are type of regulator which generate lesser voltages because in a notebook motherboard we generally have a buck regulators because we are trying to get a lesser voltages from a high voltage so in a in a PWM regulator we have two switch one inductor and one feedback that is PWM regulators but if we go into studying this uh, the data sheet of the 3.35 volt regulator IC the different types of regulator IC we'll see that there are various modes of working one is voltage control another is current control what those steps are if we do not understand those steps that will seem something like confusing and if there is any confusion that would provide an hindrance to diagnostic so you must clear at least all the important concepts and that's why this is my class to understand the 3.3 5 volt regulator IC all pins okay so let's go to the next slide and as I said the switching regulators there are different types of switching regulators one is the buck converters another is boost and another is inverter and we'll see in the next slide what are those uh, different types of uh, regulators and uh, as I have spoken a switching regulator uses a power switch an inductor and a diode to transfer energy and we'll see in some switching regulators we don't have two MOSFETs we have one diode and one inductor what is synchronous switching regulator what is asynchronous switching regulators and those are the differences the synchronous switching regulators are those kind of switching regulator which employ two MOSFETs whereas asynchronous switching regulators are those which doesn't employ MOSFET each employs one diode and that is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous and synchronous rectifiers they are much efficient because that use because they use MOSFETs and in MOSFETs we have lesser energy uh, consumption okay so I think I'm pretty much uh, clear with what I'm speak, uh, speaking till now I'm telling that a linear regulator generates a less voltage through 
a voltage uh, through the loss across the resistors whereas a switching regulator generates lesser voltages by controlling the turning on and turning off of two switches and there are two kinds of switching regulators one is synchronous and another is unsynchronous in a synchronous switching regulators we have two MOSFETs as acting as a switch whereas in asynchronous switching regulators we have one diode instead of MOSFETs and we'll see what are the differences between both of them okay so in this slide uh, this is an example of buck converters this is an asynchronous buck converters doesn't employ any MOSFETs and this is V in and it, has, it is a diode and this is one inductors so we'll discuss the working of this section also if we turn on this the switch turn on then the current would right the current would increase slowly right the current would increase slowly whereas if it's get turned off the current would reduce but it would reduce slowly so that is the change when we employ an inductor and I will understand it in the next slide and this is simple boost converter so in the buck and the boost you can see the difference the switch is here and here the switch is here okay and a diode is empl employed over here whereas the diode is employed here so that is the basic configuration of a buck converters and a boost converter and I have tried to list them out that maybe we, uh, you can you can see the circuits in various kind of electronic devices uh, right now um, we are concentrating on buck converters but in various electronic devices you might anchor uh, this uh, inverting topology and the transformable flyback topology and this is employed in SMPs maybe this course is not about our SMPs but I have a separate course where we are talking about designing an SMPS and designing an adapter. Okay. Okay, so let's summarize what we have discussed till now in this class. And so why we use switching regulators? Yeah. So the first point that we discuss is switching frequent efficiency is better in a switching regulator because less amount of energy is uh, consumed or it is less amount of energy is wasted okay and the third is energy stored by inductor in switching regulator can be transformed to output voltages that can be greater than input or can be less than input or can be inverting than input which is not possible in a linear regulator because linear regulator reduces voltage through resistors okay but the question is if every if switching regulator is so efficient why there is need of linear regulators there is a need of linear regulators because as we have uh, uh, spoken that in a switching regulator we require two MOSFETs one inductor one capacitor it will create a lot of noises and these noises can interfere with the data flowing across the various communication buses right so we don't want to interfere those things so linear regulators provide less noise and have a higher bandwidth whereas a switching regulator doesn't have a higher bandwidth okay so let's go to the next slide now let's understand how does a switching regulator work this is as we have spoken this is a boost converter not a buck converter okay this is a boost configuration so what will happen suppose let's take the case the switch is on this switch represents the MOSFETs in a regulators because MOSFETs acts as a switch here this is a basic block diagram of a switching regulator we are trying to understand the concept behind it and we'll use this concept when we are going to study the data sheet of 3.35 volt regulator IC so what will happen if the switches gets closed the current will flow over here the the flow of current across this inductor would be large but this inductor will block the uh, flow of current and it will not rise like uh, in a in instantaneously it will rise slowly but the rise of current will be positive so the current is rising okay 
let's suppose the case when the when this switch is off in that case the current would flow across this as we know capacitor will try to reduce the flow of current so the flow of current would decrease okay we'll see in the next slide this is happening over here but this the entire time the time at which the current increases and the time at which the current increases this entire time is called duty cycle okay the, the entire time is called t complete time okay and this complete the if we calculate a formula basically in this stereo steady state operation the average voltage across the inductor would remain zero in in the entire switching cycle the average voltage drop across the inductor would be zero so utilizing this formula we have got it uh, we write t on by t on plus t off as a duty cycle so for uh, just understanding purpose we will not go into this mathematics if of understanding this thing but we just have to note over here is that duty cycle is t on by t on plus t off this is t on and this is t off t on is the time for which the switch is closed and t off is the time for this switch is off so we define t on by t on plus t off is duty cycle and we calculating this we have got a formula like v out that is the output voltage is v in voltage into duty cycle this is duty cycle so if we want a lesser voltage suppose we want a two uh, output two voltages from a regulator then at that time the t on would be less and if we want three volt then the t on would be more because uh, t on should be more because we know calculating this by this thing this is v out is v in into duty cycle right v in into duty cycle so if you check the logic of the lower MOSFET in case of 3 volt that will give you a lesser logic whereas if you check the logic of a 5 volt then it will give a higher logic because V out is V in into duty cycle and duty cycle is T on by T on plus T off and this T on plus T off is constant so if we reduce if we change this T on then the output voltage would change so if if you have a logic multimeter always use logic multimeter when trying to repair an electronic circuits like notebook motherboard right because notebook motherboard uses lots of mosfets lots of transistors and trying to use if you want to check it we have to use a logic multimeter that that can help us to check very easily so if you check MOSFETs, the, uh, the MOSFETs in a 3.3 uh, side of the regulator IC there, you will get less logic in the lower side MOSFET. Whereas if you want to check in 5 volt, it will give you more. Okay, because V out is V in into duty cycle and duty cycle is T on by T on plus T off. And T on is the time for which this MOSFET is closed okay so if you want to get lesser voltages then t on should be off for a larger time okay and if you want to get more voltage then t on should be larger and when we study the uh, notebook schematics we'll see this switch and this diode is replaced by two mosfets the upper side mosfets and the lower side mosfets we are just understanding the basic concepts behind the regulators and will use it to understand the scheme uh, the data set of the regulator IC okay now there are basically two control techniques as we have spoken if we change the duty cycle will change the output regulate output voltage so there are two modes to operate a, a pulse width modulation regulator there are two modes one is voltage control voltage mode control and another is current mode control see discussing this thing in detail would require a lot of mathematics like Nyquist theorem we can have we can plot the various graph and we can understand what is actually a single loop what is actually dual loop I'm not going to do that thing 
I'm trying to simplify it in order to understand, in order to basically understand the switching regulators in a good way. Because if we can understand that in a switching regulator, each and every point, then it would really uh, give us a very good idea that yes, this switching regulators works like this. So I'm not going to mathematics. I'm speaking again. I'm not going to mathematics. How is it single loop? How is it dual loop? How a voltage mode control? How a current mode control is better than voltage mode control? But I'll explain it in a very simple way. So there are two techniques of operating a pulse with modulation. In fact, there are some many other techniques. But these are the two techniques. These are the primarily two techniques used to operate a pulse with modulation regulators which are commonly used in notebook motherboard so we'll go with the voltage control voltage mode control which is perhaps usually used okay in voltage mode control what happens is the output voltage the output voltage is feedback to the input to check the error okay and we have a v reference like we already know that a 3.3 voltage regulator has to generate 3.3 volt. We already know a reference. So, if there is any difference in the output due to, uh, like uh, if, if the notebook motherboard requires more current, then voltage would, voltage would get dropped, right? But we have to fix this voltages. So, the error will get feedback to the input and that would change the pulse, PWM. Like here you see the output voltage is compared with a V reference with a comparator that V error is fitted to the PWM modulator where these where these things are these things are present inside the regulator IC. This part is present inside the regulator IC and that regulator IC will then generate drive high and drive low at the upper MOSFET and the lower MOSFET, right? That will generate drive high and drive low at the upper MOSFET and the lower MOSFET. But what time it will generate drive high, what time it will generate drive low, at till how many seconds it will have drive high high till how many second drive low will high this all will depend on this feedback error right this v error and this v error comes from comparing the output voltages and it will give an error signal it will get fed to the pwm internal pwm modulator present in the regulator ic that will generate a signal the get drive signal and that will control the turning on and turning off of the mosfets so if we go with the mathematical analysis of this voltage mode control, this is basically a one loop control because we are trying to compare an output voltage. We are not trying to see the current over here. We are not trying to check or we are not trying to basically control the output current. We are just trying to control the output voltage. So this is a voltage mode and I have written a transfer function. I will not explain transfer function over here because transfer function is again a very engineering term and I have just written a transfer function is basically a, is of second order and if we talk of current control that is a transfer function is of just single order that is more simplistic. Here we are just analyzing the output current we are trying to control the output voltage not trying to control the output current. But in the next slide, here in the next slide, this is current mode control. Here the output current is also fitted to a comparator. This output current and the V error. The V error was the previous slide. This V error. The output minus V reference. Okay. And the current. These two things are compared to generate the get drive signal that is drive high and drive low and that this is a dual loop control in this case we are trying to control the output voltage and output current not only voltage we are trying to control regulate both output voltage and out, output current okay so this is 
better in fact okay this is this type of regulators are better because we are trying to regulate the output current and output voltage why this is better this is better because it will it, it will it will help not to increase the lot of current lot of output current that may hamper the uh, the afterward components okay because if you do not control control the output current that may hamper the devices where this current is going on so this this kind of regulators are better because they are trying to control the output voltage and output current okay so let's see over here as i said this is voltage mode control and this is an example of voltage mode control here the output voltage is compared with a V reference that generates V error. This V error is fitted to a comparator which uh, which input is a ramp oscillator. It will compare this this ramp, this ramp, and this error is getting compared, and it generates the V switch, which which will turn on and turn off this switch. Here we are just representing only one switch and one diode, but this diode would also be replaced by a MOSFET and if both sides are MOSFET these are called synchronous regulator whatever we are discussing is asynchronous regulator because we are using just one MOSFET and one diode these are asynchronous regulator but in a notebook motherboard we have synchronous regulators both the switches are MOSFET it is not necessary it is not necessary to have both switch as MOSFETs. We can have one MOSFET replaced by a diode to act as a regulator, but that makes it as an asynchronous regulator. Okay, so this is an example. The output voltage is compared with a V reference. It will generate a V error. This V error is basically compared with a ramp oscillator and that will generate a V switch. Now, where this ramp oscillator is, these are all inside the regulator IC. Okay, inside the regulator IC, that will generate the gate drive signal that is drive high and drive low. This is a voltage mode control because we are trying to regulate only a voltage. And an example is MAX1932. This MAX1932 is an example of voltage mode control. This is COMP. What is COMP? COMP will is basically this will output the V V error. This basically this will output this one. This it will output this one over here. Okay. So this is uh, an example of voltage mode control and uh, max one nine three two is basically a simple uh, boost regulator and here we can see the output voltage is the output voltage it is feedback is feedback to this max 1932 and this is DAC out that is inside this max 1932 that there is a digital to analog converter that will set the output voltages so the if this output voltage and the DAC output voltage is same there will, there will be no current flowing across it okay and the feedback this feedback this is there's a feedback going over here okay there's a feedback going over here so this feedback will be compared with an internal comparator with a reference voltage of around 1.25 volt and that error would be over here pin number 8 comparator because the error is a is having how on is a, having a high output impedance that will basically act as a current source and we will understand this comp pin because uh, if you see the dv2 schematic and if you see the the 3.35 volt regulator ic you will find comp pin comp pin let's see the schematic diagram of the dv2000 and they will understand over here you see comp1 and comp2 so what are those what are those basically comp1 and comp2 this comp1 and comp2 are as i have spoken over here as i have spoken that 
it's not necessary to understand this thing but if you understand each and every pin it would be really very good so what exactly is comp comp is basically generating the v the feedback voltage that is the full uh, voltage which is sensed over here which is compared with an internal comparator having a reference voltage of 1.25 that v error is coming over here v error because this v error is having how high output impedance that is is anything that is a having high output imped, impedance can act as a current source so if we change the value of this r7 and c4 then we can increase the loop gain we can basically increase the loop gain so similarly if we change the values over here if we change the value of this register we can change the loop gain loop gain is basically the overall gain as we have seen as i have told that in the voltage mode control there is only one loop we are trying to control the output voltage not output current so this comp1 and comp2 will basically output this can be this is an output pin it will basically output the error okay error v feedback minus a reference voltage and it will be output at this pin that is comp1 and comp2 so let's go back again to what we are discussing till now and yeah max 1932 and we have discussed over here there is another type of control that is current mode control where we try to control the output current also and output voltages and how do we current we sense the output current we sense the output current and that sensed output current is compared with an internal comparator this current and v error and that error will drive will, will try to drive internal pwm pwm pulse width modulation and that will drive produce get drive signal that is drive high and drive low drive high and drive low over here you see over here drive high drive high and drive low so this drive high and drive low is generated through an through over here through an internal arrangement that is comparing the v output and the output current that is dual loop and normally in a notebook motherboard we have a regulator which are operating in current mode those which are trying to control the output current and those which are trying to control the output voltages okay so and let this is an example as uh, as i said that the current mode control is a dual loop how dual loop one that is controlling the output voltage and one that is controlling the output current not going into mathematics mathematic mathematically it can be proved that it is a dual loop right but we're not going into that mathematics you can just analyze this is and one loop and another is second loop what is the first loop first loop it is trying to control the output voltage second loop it is trying to control the output current so current mode regulator is better and those are used in notebook motherboard here this is the example you can see this output voltage is compared over here that is generating v error compared with the v reference and the current sensed you see a register is there in the path of inductor that will sense the flow of current more current more drop less current less drop so that will be sensed and it will convert into voltage and this is compared with the regulator that will generate a signal to drive an rs flip flop you know what is rs flip flop just remember if in rs flip flop r is 1 value would be 0 if r is 0 value would be one right rs flip-flop r means reset set means set so if r is one value to be zero if r is zero value to be one right so 
this v error and the current is compared to generate a signal over here right generate a signal over here and this generate it will generate a signal and that will compare with a pulse oscillator to generate the v switch that will drive the external mosfets right external mosfet here in all the examples i'm showing those are all asynchronous switching regulator asynchronous switching regulator means there is only one MOSFET used and another is diode whereas in a notebook motherboard synchronous switching regulators are used and they are better and we will we'll discuss why synchronous switching regulators are better why I am trying to discuss all these things is to understand switching regulators in a better way till now what we have discussed switching regulators are better than linear regulators switching regulators can be operated in two ways one is the voltage mode control another is current mode control in voltage mode control we are trying to control only the output voltage whereas in a current mode control we are trying to compare uh, to regulate the output current and the output voltage there are two types of switching mode regulators one is synchronous another is asynchronous in a synchronous we use only one mosfet and one diode whereas in a as in a in, in a synchronous switching regulator we use two mosfets for two switch where in, in asynchronous we are using only one switch okay and having two switch is better okay so this is an example max 668 is basically current mode switching regulator and these are the control techniques as we have seen over here as, as I was as I was talking about actually I have a little pain in my teeth so I'm not uh, able to speak in that way so I think some of the words cannot be understand by students and they can they have to basically rewind the videos to understand it I'm having a little pain and that why that's why the, that there has been so much of delay in preparing these videos and giving to the students but um, the pain is, is the pain is quietly healing up so in the next coming days those videos will be very frequent and I'm trying to complete this course by 15th of August because after that we have another course on tablet and mobile repairing and we'll start those course also okay so in this coming weeks uh, the videos very often and I'm trying to complete the videos as much as possible with maximum recording of practical classes also with analysis of sample problems like no display date BIOS problem how do we analyze this is a BIOS problem how do we analyze this is a display problem the real cases that we experience in our service center okay and we'll try to solve those problems with whatever things we have learned over here no heat and trial analyzing everything from very basic okay so as we have spoken there are two types of regulators one is asynchronous switching regulators another is synchronous switching regulator so in a notebook motherboard we have synchronous switching regulators we are using two MOSFETs for a switch but as I said, it's not necessary to have two MOSFETs. We can replace one MOSFET with a diode. But do not try to use that. If you understand what I have spoken till now, then you can do this, no problem. But if you do not understand, if you're just understanding the crux, then do not do this. Just replace this with MOSFETs. We'll also talk about the cases of sorting. How do we check which thing is sort? How do we check the whether 3.35 volt regulator is sort? In many cases, you will find this IC to be sort, but we'll check how it is sort. Okay. Once we covered the things up to certain level, once we finish the power level, once we finish the supply up to the CPU level, then we will discuss these things. So, in a notebook motherboard, a synchronous switching regulator is used, and this is skip mode the skip modes are present in some some of the regulator i see what is what exactly is a skip mode if our if our output voltage is fixed for a certain time there is no disturbance in the output voltage then the gate drive and gate that is the gate drive pulse 
can we switch for can we switch off for some time we can skip some cycles okay we can skip some cycles right that is skip mode skipping some cycles of the pwm that is skip mode it, it is basically used in light load light load where light load means when there is a less requirement of current where when we are not using graphic intensive program when there is not much price on 3.35 volt to generate a greater output current okay that is skip mode not necessary efficiency as we already skip skip mode is used for efficiency so now uh, we have understood the switching regulators and now we'll go into the data sheets of the two switching regulators used in the Lenovo Y520 and another used in DV2000 and we'll try to understand each of the pins I, uh, please note I have discussed the things why these two diodes why these two MOSFETs are used and we have discussed the type of control techniques one is the voltage mode control techniques another is current mode control uh, current mode uh, control techniques and uh, we have also discussed the block diagram of all of them so we'll go back to the data sheet and understand the data sheet using this concept okay okay so till now we have discussed the basic concept of switching regulators we have understood how does the switching regulators work now we're going to to see how does the RT8206L or the TPS51120 which are present as voltage regulator in Lenovo Y570 and DV2000 respectively works. Why we have studied the previous thing how does the switching regulator works because we want to understand these two chips in a very great way. So now while we are discussing each thing in this data sheet, the most important things in this data data sheet to understand what are the important uh, pins in a switching regulators that is 3.35 volt regulator IC so RT8206L slash M this is used as a 3.35 volt regulator IC in Lenovo Y570 it's written L slash M why does it why, oh, why it's written L slash M let's check actually the numbering of this IC is L means with SECFB and M means without SECFB. What does this SECFB means? We'll discuss it later on when we are discussing each of the points. And this box, it means if it's G, then it means it's green, that is lead free. And if it's Z, it's leaded, not lead free. And here QW, it represents the package type. Okay. So and it's written RT8206 L slash M dual step down switch mode power supply dual dual means two voltages coming from one switching regulator and here it's generating 3.3 and 5 volt okay it's also written RT8206 L slash M includes two pulse width modulation controller fixed at 5 volt slash 3.3 volt or adjustable from 2 volt to 5.5 volt so that means this switching regulator can act can work in two way right you see over here it can work in two ways one as fixed when we want a fixed 3.3 volt when we want a fixed 5.5 volt then this feedback fb1 and fb2 is grounded either may be grounded or it may be attached to VCC so if this FB1 and FB2 is attached to ground or connected to ground or VCC that means the switching regulator is operating in a fixed way that it has to generate 3.3 volt it has to generate 5 volt that is if you measure by multimeter the voltage over here it would be always be 3.3 volt and if you measure with multimeter over here it always be 5 volt in fixed volt in in fixed way when this uh, voltage regulator is actually operating in a fixed way way but sometime 
but sometime you must have noticed when you measure by multimeter the value is approximately not 3.3 volt it is somewhat less 3.1 3.2 3 right 3.1 3.19 uh, if you measure voltage over here it may give you value like 4.9 4.8 but that doesn't mean this switching regulator is faulty because the switching regulators it also works in a adjustable manner you see over here adjustable voltage regulator in that case your FB2 and your FB1 is connected over here so how to know whether this regulator is working in a, in a adjustable way or a fixed way we can see this schematic let's see this schematic here in the schematic you see FB1 this FB1 is connected that means this part is working in an adjustable way that is if you measure the voltage over here sometime it might give you values less than 5 volt little less than 5 volt that doesn't mean that doesn't mean this switching regulator is faulty okay but here here in the schematic you see over here this 32 pin number is basically FB2 feedback 2 if you see over here if you see in the data sheet 32 pin number FB2 yeah FB2 but here in the schematic of Lenovo Y570 this RE it is denoted by REFIN2 that is feedback 2 is connected to VCC right V because VCC is also connected to this so it's connected to VCC that means it is working in a fixed way that is if you measure voltage over here it will always show you 3 volt right 3 volt not less than that not less than that so you got my point how to check whether this switching regulator is working in an adjustable way or in fixed way if we have to check the feedback pin FB1, FB2. Here in Lenovo Y570, they have denoted FB2 by REFIN2 because FB2 is connected with a reference. That is, this part is working in a fixed way, whereas this part is not working in a fixed way. This is working in an adjustable way. Okay. Now let's go back to the data sheet and uh, will analyze each of the things very impressive these all things can be analyzed if you understand the data sheet each things properly right we'll discuss each of the points and this is the two way that is this uh, switching regulator can be used one is the fixed way another is the adjustable way and let's check the Let's go ahead. Yeah, this is the functional block diagram of RT8206L/M. So this uh, regulator has inside two SMPS1, SMPS2 PWM buck regulator. Okay, this is PWM buck regulator. Another is LDO, low dropout fixed bolt right and this is SMPS1 SMPS2 so this SMPS2 will generate gate drives this will generate a gate drive signal U gate 2 and this U gate 2 is generated through this comparator the inside comparator this comparator is inside it you cannot so you cannot see it right this is inside the regulator IC and this is the boot 2 that is the supply to the supply to the comparator which is generating the generating the gate drive signal for the upper gate MOSFET and this is for the lower gate MOSFET this is connected to the PVCC we, as we have already spoken PVCC very important the, what was the first point it gets V in then LDO is released LDO is connected to the VCC and PVCC so if PVCC 5V underscore AL you know 5V underscore is generating through LDO and this is going to VCC and PVCC so if VCC and PVCC is not there then it will not generate the U gate 2 and L gate 2 right so 
this L gate 2 is generated by the comparator and whose signal is generated by the internal SMPS2 PWM buck controller. Similarly over here U gate 1, U gate 2, L gate 1, U gate 1, L gate 1, U gate 2, L gate 2. There are two MOSFETs connected over here. You see that two MOSFETs connected DH3 and you see DH3 and LX3. This is LX3 and this is DL3. That is drive high, drive low. That is connected to the U gate 2, L gate 2. Similarly over here, U gate 1 and L gate 1. Right? U gate 1 and L gate 1. So, here in the data sheet we are checking. There, there are two internal SMPS1 PWM buck controller. Right, one is generating the 3.3 volt, another is generating 5 volt, and how they are generated through controlling the turning on and turning off of the external MOSFET. And to control the turning on and turning off the MOSFET, the U gate 2 and L gate 2 is generated. And how U gate 2 is generated with this comparator with boot 2 and phase 2 input, right? And there is an internal LDO. You see. There is internal power on sequence. Internal power on sequence. If we go to the data set over here, they will clearly write it in the very first page. You can see each thing has to be minutely written. You see over here, they will write something related to this. Yeah. RT8206L slash M includes onboard power up sequencing, power good outputs, internal soft start, internal soft discharge. What does this mean? What does this mean? Onboard power up sequencing. What does this mean? Internal soft start. What is soft start? Power, power up sequencing means you can clearly see over here in the functional diagram you see the functional diagram and uh, I think the functional diagram is on page number 5 so you see the power on sequence it is, this is connected to the enable LDO EN1 and EN2 that is with, with this is the logic inside this regulator IC which will determine whether to generate 3 volt, whether to activate this SMPS1, whether to activate this SMPS2. So the logic, the power on sequence logic is inside, which is which gets started with EN1, EN2 and enable LDO. Right? And what is in what is soft start? Okay, so let us see what is internal soft start and uh, why is it required? This is actually my in, is uh, my handwriting. I do not find time to basically make it in PPT. So in this uh, diagram, you can see this output voltage is connected to the amplifier, which is giving you V error. So suppose at time when we start a circuit, suppose when we start notebook motherboard then in that case this output voltage at at the starting would be zero right so if this would be zero then this v error would be too much and if this v error it would be too much this will generate pulses very often and that will lead to a very high charge current very high current flowing over here over here and this high pulse may damage this transistor or MOSFETs connected over here if we see in the schematic it might damage this MOS is this this MOSFETs because at time t is equal to zero this voltage is zero so this this will give a feedback over here and this will generate very high pulses this high drive dh3 and dl3 and that might damage this mosfets and the components which are connected to the 3v cpu power line so we need to basically we need to slow down this wheel so that's why an external 
capacitor is connected you have you must observe some previous circuit some previous voltage regulator where an external electrolytic capacitor is connected but it is costly to connect an external electrolytic capacitor because the assembling cost would also increase so nowadays this type of voltage regulators are coming where there is an internal soft start right internal soft start and what is internal soft start uh, we'll see another picture over here and this diagram is basically representing an internal soft start here we do not use any external capacitor which will save assembling cost right and here what we have used is we have basically used a current divider which is giving a less value over here hence not hence not producing that much pulse initially and saving this transistor so we'll not go into details of this circuit but we have to understand that nowadays internal soft start is there no more external so, uh, no more external capacitor is used and what is soft start we, are, we have already understood what is soft start soft start is that when initially when output voltage is zero we need to generate pulse slowly right we need to generate those pulses slowly okay okay so we'll go back to the data sheet and understand each of the points in the RT8206LM so this uh, three uh, this RT8206LM is having two SMPS1 this is SMPS1 SMPS2 boot 2 phase 2 this is the supply for the internal comparator to generate the U gate 2 which is basically the gate drive signals to the upper MOSFET over here you can see over here this signal is generating the DH3 that is connected to the U gate 2 okay U gate 2 and this is L gate 2 and L gate 2 is connected over here L get 2 is connected to the lower MOSFETs okay and so uh, we have and this is the basically the PWM part inside the uh, RT8206 M and this is this is one time uh, one sort trigger that is generated by the PWM that this is the internal logic this part is the internal logic uh, we don't have to go into this detail and now we will cover the details of each pins of this regulator IC so let's go to the each pin reference this is pin 1 so let's go to the schematic and see what does it represent reference and reference is connected to 5V underscore AL right 5V underscore AL which is generated through the LDO when it gets enable LDO and how does it gets enable LDO the if some part of V in voltage is fitted to the enable LDO right after it gets enable LDO LDO is generated 5V underscore L and this 5V L and uh, 5V underscore L, L is connected to the reference right so this reference is basically it can source up to 50 um, uh, milli, uh, microampere uh, for external loads right this is T on T on is pin number 2 so let's see this is T on pin number 2 so what is what does T on uh, pin is function is T on is frequency select input that is we want to fit the at what frequency this regulator has to work so if T on is VCC then it will work at 200 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz and if T on is a reference then it would work at 300 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz and if T on is ground it would work at 400 kilohertz or 500 kilohertz so in this schematic of Lenovo, 5, uh, Lenovo Y470 570 this T on is grounded that means that means here they are working as 400 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz and let's see VCC VCC is the 
analog supply voltage in input you can see in the functional diagram vcc vcc is going to the sm pwm core right pwm core so vcc 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 is going to the pwm core and P vcc is also connected to the 5v underscore al so these are the important pins right these are the important pins and ENLDU, enable LDU, this is four number, this is connected, a part of V, v in is fitted to the enable LDO and if it gets enable LDO, then LDO would get generated, right, then LDO would get generated, otherwise, if this, if you see in this over here, if this resistance is faulty, or if this resistance is faulty then correct enable LDO would not be feeded and in that case no LDO would get generated so we have to check these registers okay and let's go V in V in as we have already spoken V in is the power supply input and similarly DC bat out is the power supply input in DV2000 okay and the linear regular uh, this uh, LDO LDO we already understand and there is one more important point to note over here is that if you see over here if the output voltage that is the LDO would get feeded by BYP after after you see after this part after this 5 volt stabilize that is after this 5 volt stabilize the internal LDO gets shut down and this LDO voltage would be generated through this BYP and BYP is connected to the out one and where is out one connected out one is connected to the output so if this voltage stabilizes then this LDO is get feeded by BYP and we can see over here this BYP is connected to the LDO and there is a switch hold threshold and this is determined by the internal logic okay so let's find about the other pins LDO we have already covered and this is BYP that is switch over source voltage input for LDO that is if the voltage external V out 2 that is 5 voltage stabilizes then the LDO is connected to the BYP and this is V out 1 V out 1 is what is V out 1 V out 1 this is V out 1 you see over here out one this is connected over here so as we have already spoken as we have already spoken that this this uh, regulator operates in two ways this part is working in a adjustable because the feedback is connected right fb1 is connected whereas here this feedback refin2 feedback is connected to 5 underscore al that is it is connected to the vcc if it's connected to vcc then it will work as fixed right it will work as fixed so in this case v out one is smps output voltage sense, sense input and fb1 is smps1 feedback input because this internal smps this internal smps will require feedback will require feedback even in two operation that is one in fixed operation and another in adjustable operation it will require feedback so if the fb1 that is here in the schematic diagram we'll go to the schematic diagram here this fb2 is connected to vcc so who will provide feedback this will provide feedback see this V out 2 is connected to the over here the feedback it's giving feedback to the this part SMPS so there are two so there are two pins one is V out another is feedback V out is for providing internal feedback to the PWM inside this IC and 
feedback is like if we are not using feedback then it will operate in fixed manner if we are using feedback it will work in adjustable fashion right okay so let's go see the other pins and ILIM1 this is SMPS1 current limit adjustment we can adjust the SMPS1 current limit externally by this pin right and here these pins are ILIM1 ILIM1 you see this is grounded and this is grounded right this is grounded and this is grounded and power good one this all regulators supply power good which are connected together to give feedback to the IO controller we can see in the schematic this will generate power good one and power good two so this is POK one that is power OK one and POK POK two power OK two and this this power good will will we get converted to H power good which is feeded to IO right and as we have spoken in the very in the third class that all regulators supply power good which will eventually goes to the PCH which will eventually goes to PCH and X which will eventually go to IO controller and except VRM which generates power good directly to the PCH okay so let's see the other pins en1 en1 here you see en1 en1 enable one where is this pin and en2 where is this pin we can search over here 3 v 5 v underscore en so where would, would they get so they are con getting connected to the 5 v underscore l and if we see DV2000, this EN1 and EN2 are feeded from the IO controller and PC and ICH. Where in Lenovo Y470 or 570, we have no such. It is internally feeded. That is, this IC will generate the switching voltages once it gets V in and enable LDO this will generate this switching voltages this switching SMPS inside this this SMPS inside the uh, the uh, RT8206 will get started when it gets V in and enable LDO right but in DV2000 this enable is uh, generated by IO and ICH right and there are in fact four enables in the DV2000 these two are not connected and we'll see when we are seeing the data set of DV2000 what is the significance of this okay so let's complete this data sheet of RT8206 one enable one you get one you get one is the high side MOSFET floating gate driver here you get one you see you get one you get this is drive you get two and l get two and you get one this is you get one and l get one so these are the driving signals for this mosfets okay these are the driving signal for this mosfets and boot 1 boot 2 boot 1 boot 2 you see over here boot 1 boot 2 this is boot 2 and phase 2 that is the source for the internal com comparator which will generate the signal u get 2 and for l get 2 we have pvcc and ground so that's why pvcc is important if we do not have pvcc then this l get 2 won't generate and so the lower sign mosfet won't work so let's see over here vcc this is vcc and here you will find pvcc pvcc right so both of this pin would have ldo voltages and pvcc is important because pvcc helps to generate dl dl3 and here 
DL5, right? You see in the block diagram, DL3 and DL5 because this part generates the L gate 2 and L gate 1. So this is connected to the PVCC, right? PVCC and the phase is the phase 1 and phase 2 is the lower supply for this comparator, okay? So we see the other pins. FV1 and FV2 we have already discussed, LGATE2, BOOT2 we have already discussed, EN1 and EN2, SECFB as we have already discussed, RT8206 LM or, or L or M. So what does this mean? SECFB we see over here in the very first page, if L that means it is with SECFB, and if it's M, that is, it is without SECFB. So we'll see what does this SECFB means. In SCFB, it is charge pump feedback input. That is, the SECFB is used to monitor the external charge pump. So RT8206L is having SECFB enabled whereas RT8206M is having SCFB not enabled. Okay. And skip we have already discussed. Skip is for the skipping pulses during light load condition. When there is a light load, we are, the skip mode is entered. Okay. And ILIM2 we have already discussed. VOU2 is similar to VOU1. So now we will discuss the data set of TPS 5.120 and we'll see what are the differences between those two data sheet and the implementation. Okay. Okay, so now we'll see the data sheet of TPS 5.120 and this is the and the 3.5 three, uh, three uh, voltage regulator used in DV2000 and if you see in the data so it's clearly written it is a highly sophisticated dual current mode synchronous step down controller we have already discussed what is current mode what is voltage mode in voltage mode only output voltage is controlled whereas in current mode we are also controlling the output current right so it is in, in this line, it is very similar to the RT8206M. Alright. And if we see its more detail, uh, let's go back. Let's go directly to its pin details. Okay. Page number 8. Yeah, this is COMP1 and COMP2. If we see the schematic, this is COMP1 and COMP2. This COMP1 and COMP2 was not present in RT8206LM. So what if this function is if we see it's written loop compensation pin connect RC from this pin to ground for proper loop compensation and what this is exactly is this comp 1 and comp 2 is basically this part right this is comp 1 is connected over here and comp 2 is again connected to the this is basically giving the V error this uh, COMP1 is internally connected to the V error whereas COMP2 is also connected internally to the V error too because there are two SMPs inside it. So they basically act as a current source right they basically act as a current source alright COMP1 and COMP2 here you are seeing four enable pins first one enable pins is connected to the PICH EN2 is connected to the IO and enable 3 and enable 5 are meant for LDO and there are two LDO V regulated 3 and V regulated 5. So how this enable 3 and enable 5 are determining this this uh, LDO voltage we go to this uh, the data sheet in the data sheets written enable 3 V regulated 3 3.3 low dropout linear regulator enable pin and connect to ground to disable float or tie to enable so here if you in the schematic you see this is not connected that means the LDO are enabled and if 
it's get connected to the ground this LDO would get disabled no LDO would come and hence the entire circuit won't work all right because this 51120 underscore V field is generated by 5V underscore AUX S5 all right so this won't generate if this accidentally gets connected to the ground and if it's not connected to the ground these are enabled so if it's if this IC gets the DC bat out then V regulated 3 and V regulated 5 will turn on and here you can measure with multimeter 3.3 volt and 5 volt and if you're not getting 3.35 volt check these two pins in level 3 in level 5 whether they are getting to ground if not get into the ground then your IC is faulty okay then your IC is faulty so we'll go to again to the data sheet and we have CS1 and CS2 is current sense comparator input this part was also not available in RT8206L so let's see CS1 and CS2 this is CS1 and CS2 again connected to the 51120 VFILT okay let's go again and enable we have already discussed P ground P good 1 and P good 2 is similar power good 1 power good 2 you see over here power good 1 power good 2 and where this power good is going on one of the power good is going to the CPU underscore underscore on so here this is different than RT8206L what are the differences one the enable pins another the power good this comp1 comp2 was not present okay there are four enable pins whereas there, there are only two enable pins and the LDO gets auto started okay LDO gets uh, L, uh, the, the, the switching voltage gets auto started this this was auto start in the in the previous regulator that we discussed here you see you see in this data sheet no enable pins no enable pins to start this this switching part this this SMPS2 and SMPS1 whereas in DV2000 you require these signals to start the internal SMPS so these are the basic differences and we see V, v out 1 V out 2 almost same no difference between them you see there are no difference between them but here and V regulated 3 and V regulated 5 these are the two LDO whereas in uh, RT8206 LM there was only one LDO okay so we have covered the the data sheet of both of these regulator IC and we have seen the differences between them and the major differences are basically there are four enable pins where there are only two enable pins the switching part was or uh, the switching SMPS internal SMPS was auto enabled in the RT8206 LM and how why these are differences these differences are basically due to differences in power sequencing due to the use of ICH in DV2000 and due to use of PCH in uh, Lenovo i3 Y470 and we'll discuss all about this switching power sequence in the next class before we start IO controller so I think for now on we are pretty clear about the switching regulators and in the next class we're going to cover the IO and before that we'll have the SEPI understanding the power sequence thank you